Welcome everybody to the first edition of Feeling Dangerous, the Feeling Dangerous podcast. Now you might be asking yourself, and understandably so, if you're watching this on YouTube, DDP, why is this on YouTube? If you're listening to this podcast right now, you're wondering, what the fuck is he talking about regarding YouTube? I'm listening to audio on my phone most likely. Allow me to explain. Feeling Dangerous is a pure podcast in that I will record episodes in either the same day or depending on when I finish recording the audio, the next day we'll post the audio. In the coming days after that, I will chop up the audio as I have it paired with video. I have this recording me as well, obviously, and I will put it out there across the channel across the day. So you can either get it as it comes out on podcast And by the way, there's going to be times where there's additional stuff I talk about on the podcast that doesn't find its way to the channel. Or, if you're just subscribed to the YouTube channel, you can find the content there as well. Now, if I'm talking sports, not just Mavericks and Cowboys, but WWE, I know that's sports entertainment. Let's move on. Uh, NFL, NBA, hell, NHL, whatever. If we're talking sports, it's on the Dallas Prospect. That's where that content's going to go. However... If it's pop culture, if it's film, if it's gaming, if it's writing, whatever, if it's pop culture, it's going to go on a new sub-channel of the Dallas Prospect called Cheap Pop. Now, for Cheap Pop, I've only created the sub-channel. I've literally uploaded nothing to it yet, so this content is probably going to be the first thing that drops on it. Once I have an episode that is pop culture related, this is not pop culture related, however, if you're looking at this In the description, in the title, in the podcast title, you already know what this is about. I had several topics in mind for talking about this first episode. And then about 20 minutes before I jumped on here to record this first biatch, this tool behind me decided to run his mouth. And now I'm all kinds of heated. So, if you don't know who this is, and you can be forgiven for not knowing who this is, because what all have you accomplished? For real, we're talking about Lionel Hollins, the former Vancouver Grizzlies, Memphis Grizzlies, and Brooklyn Nets coach. Now, still not ringing the bell? He was with the Grizzlies a long time, obviously, from Vancouver in 99 all the way to Memphis. I think 2013 was when he got fired. So, he had a couple good teams there with the Grizzlies late, but not a whole lot. We're talking about a guy with a sub-500 record as a coach who his last two years in the NBA didn't even make it all the way through his second year. A master record in Brooklyn, something along the lines of 48 and 71. So, that's a little over 40%, or yeah, 40% win percentage there. So, you know, ah, mediocre? No, you know what? That's not even mediocre. That's sub mediocre average is pretty much mediocre these days so if the standard for players has to rise the start the standard for coaches has to rise too and you're still mediocre now why am i bringing this up i mentioned he run he ran his mouth he jumped on sirius xm nba radio today and he decided he was going to weigh in on the rookie of the year discussion now you can be forgiven if you don't know exactly (laughs) <laughs> exactly what he said yet I'm gonna play the audio for you I'm gonna let you hear it and then I'm gonna fucking go off look up Luka Doncic shoots 41% from twos that he shoots he's two and 29 his efficiency is way down not only that Trey Young just makes basketball plays Luka Doncic reminds me of Jason Williams when he came in the league Every night there was highlight package on Jason Williams, and every night Jason Williams was in a loss. Trey Young has made an impact, and the Hawks are somebody to be reckoned with even now. It's tough to beat them. You have to go beat them, and a lot of it is due because this kid is quick as can be, and he gets to the paint, he shoots threes, he makes big shots. Holy shit. Okay. Allow me to dissect this, first of all. So you come out of the gate swinging, talking about how Luka Doncic has hit a rookie wall. Now, there's zero nuance to your argument, right? 
you're going to talk about that, and you're not going to talk about the fact that his numbers are actually up, while his field goal percentage and three-point percentage are, yes, in fact, down. They're still better than Trey Young in the whole of the season and post-All-Star. No. Not better than post-All-Star. Still better in the whole scope of the season. Uh, his overall numbers are better than Trey Young post-All-Star. It's just ridiculous of an argument because Trey Young has had the same team the whole year. If you took entering the season, the Dallas Mavericks roster and the Atlanta Hawks roster, and weighed them head-to-head, -head, they were probably about even. The Hawks have had nothing change. The Mavericks have had four starters traded in two deals. Three gone for Kristaps Porzingis, who will not play this season. Then you jettison Harrison Barnes, your number one score from the past couple of years, to Sacramento for cap relief and for Justin Jackson, who's a nice player, but he's not a starter. You have Luka Doncic having to play with a bunch of bench players, role players, no other real starter, a borderline starter, I guess, in Jalen Brunson, but you don't have near, near the kind of consistent talent to give him any help. Let's talk about usage. Luka Doncic is historic levels of usage for his rookie season. I think top two or three all time in usage rate for a rookie. Someone correct me on that in the comments. Yes, I'm still referring to a YouTube situation here. Deal with it, people who are listening on the podcast. I will show you love as well. So he's in the top three all time usage rates. Trey Young, he's fairly high as well, but he's not that high. He's like top 10, top 15, not near the same. He also doesn't have to do everything for his team anymore because he's got decent talent around him. Luka's now had to go the last third of the season when you say he's hit a rookie wall without four of the five starters. He's playing with solemn measury. Does that sound like it's not worth mentioning in terms of a drop-off? Now, you might want to say DeAndre Jordan. Eh, we can get into DeAndre Jordan later, but... It's, it's a different subject entirely. The point is, Trey has had nothing change. And yes, Trey Young has been wonderful these last 20 or so games. Great. You know why it's called the Rookie of the Year, though? It's the whole year! The whole year! It's not 20 games. It's not 25 games. It's not 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. It's 82 games. I get it, Luka hasn't played all 82 games, and neither has Trey, I don't believe. But the fact of the matter remains, it's a year-long award, and you take the entire body of work. Prior to the All-Star game, Trey Young had a three-point percentage. By the way, his gimmick, his specialty, his entire bit, a three-point percentage of 29%, 30%. Luka was 39% for a while. Has he dropped off post-All-Star break? Sure, yeah. He's been worn down by, again, historic usage rate, not great teammates in terms of starting quality, and the fact that coming out of EuroLeague the last couple years, he basically hasn't had an offseason in two years. This is his first year through the NBA, his first swim, and he hasn't had a full year yet of strength and conditioning program at an NBA level. Now, obviously, neither has Trey Young, but I would argue that Trey Young's strength and conditioning program at Oklahoma, probably a little bit more on par than what Luka Doncic was doing in EuroLeague. Now, I'm sure there are going to be people who are fans of the EuroLeague and Luka Doncic who are going to be a little bit cross with me for making a statement like that. But one thing you cannot deny, Luka Doncic was a little bit doughy when he came in. If you look back at him at training camp, he's a little bit thick. But you know what? That's fine. The kid is still awesome and amazing. And if you were to look at a picture of him in training camp versus today, you would be like, who the hell let Luka Doncic's chubby little brother on the court? It's different. But in spite of that, Luka has had just as many big moments as Trey. I know Trey Young has come on like a house of fire in these last 20 games post-All-Star break. There's still the fact that his actual numbers, his points per game, rebounds, assists, and so on, are actually still under Luka. And I'm not talking the whole season. I'm talking post-All-Star. Here's how it works. Luka was hyped 
for this entire year. And now in the last month and a half, two months, whatever, that conversation has turned a little bit because suddenly there's a shiny new toy and it's finally a discussion. If Trey Young had played his entire season the way he's played these last 20 games, I would be much more open to the discussion of, is this a legit race? Can Trey Young beat Luka? You know why I can't? Because he's done it a third of the year. A third of the season does not beat an entire year-long body of work. Has Trey had great game winners and buzzer beaters in the last month and a half? Yes. Yes, he has. I've commented on most of them. Has Luka had just as many for the season as a whole? Yes. Yes, he has. Look at his shot in Portland. 0.6 seconds left to send it to overtime. That is an absurd, absurd shot that he makes in that situation. Trey Young, yes, his game winner the other day, awesome. Complete luck of the draw being there, but you know what? Credit to him, you got to make the shot. But he hasn't done it the whole year. We want to talk head-to-head? -head? Fine, let's talk head-to-head. -head. You mentioned, Hollins, that Luka has hit a rookie wall because he's shooting, you say, 41% from the field. Turns out you got it crossed, dude. Trey Young is shooting 41.5% from the field. Luka Doncic, not much better, 42.5% from the field. Okay, interesting. Let's take a look at their three-point percentage. Oh, they're both 32.7%. Again, has Luka dropped off post-All-Star break on those fronts? Yes. Yes, he has. You might have heard the little detail earlier, historic usage, uh, subpar teammates in terms of NBA starting quality, and no offseason the last two years, basically. Yeah, yeah. That's a lot to carry on your shoulders. Trey Young doesn't have to carry that much of a load. Let's talk about... Oh, here. Here you go. Here's one Trey beats Luka on for the season. Free throw percentage for Trey Young, 82.5%. Luka, 70.9%. Rebounds. Luka wins, 7.6. I already talked about these. 7.6 to 3.6. Assists. Trey Young gets that one, 8 to 5.9%. Uh, steals, Luka, 1.1 to 0.8. Blocks, not much, but 0.3 to Luka, 0.2 to Trey Young. And uh, hey, since it's rookie of the year, I figure we should look outside of the basics. Let's look outside of just pure pure offense. Look, let's look at defense. What's your plus minus? Well, I see here that Luka Doncic is a minus 1.7 for the season. Trey Young is a minus 4.1. Interesting, interesting. Uh, let, let, let's look at something. Let's go to the next level on this, shall we? Let's talk about the real plus minus ratings in the NBA. Ooh, now we're getting saucy. Okay, Trey Young, defense. Let me see here. Let me see. Let me conduct some research. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Ah, yes. Okay, I had to scroll for a little bit, but I have found Trey Young. Trey Young. Out of 508 potential participants, ranks 404th in real plus minus. Luka Doncic, 80th. Is 80th amazing? No. But it's 80th compared to 404. Luka Doncic is substantially better defensively now than he was at the start of the year. Does that mean he's a great defender? No! No, and we don't want that weak-ass nickname, the Matador. What's wrong with you, Dallas, trying to trademark that weak shit? We don't want it. So, cool hand Luka. I'll take any of these. Luka Legend was mine. That sort of caught on briefly and faded away. Whatever. Luka Doncic, far and away, Rookie of the Year. You are a captive, Lionel Hollins, of the moment. You are a slave to the moment because you are looking purely at the last month and a half and you're correlating things without giving any nuance to them, which is the work of a lazy hack. That's what that is. That is a lazy move. You don't look at things and then you go on and you talk. And I think you just wanted the headline no, right? Because if you go on there and you say, yeah, yeah, no, it's it's Luka Doncic. Outside of Dallas, nobody probably bats an eye at that. But you call attention to it. And now there's people around the league going, oh, Lionel Collins seems to think that Trey Young has, in fact, passed him. But 
allow me to get to my biggest gripe and the one you're probably wondering why I have not addressed yet. You compare Luka Doncic to Jason White Chocolate Williams. Now, the fact that I give him his nickname in there, White Chocolate, might make you think that I take that as an insult to Jason Williams, but no, no! Uh -uh. I take it as an insult to Luka because of course I do. You coached Jason Williams, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe I am mistaken. You were only with Vancouver for a year. I don't know when Jason Williams had his swim through the Grizzlies. I'm pretty sure he did. Regardless, you say Jason Williams was a guy who put forward all kinds of highlight plays and he got empty numbers and a lot of W's in return. You compare that. You put that comparison on Luka Doncic and stand there with a straight face. I assume you had a straight face. It was a radio interview. I guess I don't know that for sure. <laughs> but you stand there and with no hint of sarcasm or jest say, Luka Doncic is that guy. You don't consider the trades, the aforementioned trades. You don't consider the usage. You don't consider the full year body of work compared to Trey Young's last, what, month and a half? Two months? Cool. Cool. Who was it that nearly slipped into the All-Star game as a rookie? Would have been the first rookie starter since... Ooh, who was it? It wasn't even Yao Ming that was a rookie starter, I don't think. Blake Griffin? Was he a starter? I don't know. First rookie voted in since Blake Griffin. It would have been since like 2004 or five. I want to say, uh, the first rookie starter. That was Luka Doncic. That was not Trey Young. Not a peep for Trey Young. Trey Young is a wonderful player. I have said that. I said coming into the league, I thought he would be boom or bust. He looks like he'll be more boom than bust. But do I think that the guy we've seen Trey Young be the last 20-so games is the guy that he's going to be his whole career? No. I've watched Trey Young in high school. I've watched Trey Young at Oklahoma. Trey Young went to my high school. I've watched him in high school. I've watched him in college. I've watched him in the NBA. He is a very talented player, but he's hot and cold. His usage at OU and his drop-off late at OU is kind of like Luka's drop-off for the Mavericks this season. When it's one guy having to carry all the load, eventually the other team's going to figure it out and pretty much just make life hell for that one guy, knowing the rest of the team can't beat him. So, Trey Young dropped off last year. He's nice and hot now. He struggled mightily through the first part of his uh, rookie campaign. Luka, aside from an initial hiccup or two the first couple games, really hasn't missed a beat until the All-Star break came and went. And now you see some of the fatigue because of that usage rate. That's what you need to look at. That's the context. Trey Young, he's hot and cold. He's been largely hot post All Star break. Good for him. Good for him. I mean that. Luca has been struggling. He's been cold post All Star break, but his numbers post All Star break in terms of points, rebounds, assists, all that. Well, not assists. Trey has more assists per game. But in all those meaningful areas, Luca is still winning like 8 out of 10 categories. And even if you take the full scope, of the season, Luca is still winning. So when you want to talk about, oh, Luca's not very efficient. I, I've seen this before. Look at your own guy's numbers, you clown. You weirdo. Don't be a troll, man. You're just trying to get attention. You're, you're not going to get any substantial attention for this, though. I really don't think you are. If, you, if you're trying to generate buzz around you where people actually want to talk to you a little bit more. I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think anyone cares that much. No one cared who you were until you trashed Luka Doncic. That's pretty much how I look at it. Uh, it it's, it's a ridiculous statement. It's a ridiculous argument that you're trying to make in this case. Luka is the rookie of the year. Are there guys trying to push a campaign now for Trey? Sure. Even some players. And if you're a victim of the moment, if you're a captive of the moment, a slave to the moment, you're going to look at it and you're going to say, hey, we have a real category here. Like we have a real 
a real chase. We have a real categorical discussion about who's better. But if you actually look at the numbers and you look at the moments, you're going to see it's lopsided in Luca's favor. If it's a scale, <clears throat> it's lopsided in Luca's favor. It's Is it clear cut? No. If Trey Young had played like this the whole year, you'd have a real discussion. He hasn't. So it's not. <laughs> oh my god. I'm still having to talk about this. I'm really still having to talk about this. Lionel well, Hollins, dude. I don't know why you wanted to stir everything up. Why you felt like this was an appropriate response to the rookie of the year question. Is it fine to say that Luca, because of his usage rate, if you were a little nuanced, say because of his usage rate, because of the trades, his numbers have dipped a little bit, even though his actual points per game rebounds and assists have all gone up. Is it okay to say that his efficiency has dropped off a little bit because of those previously mentioned points? Yes. And I would have respected you if you had done that. If you had said that, I would have respected you more. You don't. So you make the implication that it's pure, simple, cut and dry, Trey's the guy, and Luke is just some scrub from Europe. Dude, it's so obvious why the game passed you by. I, I can only imagine, if you were still coaching in the NBA today, how foolish you would look. Pretty much as foolish as you look now, I guess, but only more people would actually see and hear what you have to say because you wouldn't be completely irrelevant. You want to talk about Luka and his drop-off and say that he's a guy that gets nothing but empty numbers and he's an inefficient player because of not even a year. You're talking about because of a 20-game stretch at the end of his rookie campaign. It's funny you point to his less than a year because it took less than two years for the Nets to drop you on your ass. The game passes you fast, guy. You weren't ready for it and you still don't appear to get it. 